What's going on, everybody? Got a new bow sight set up. Just pulling into Ricky's place right now. Well, we made it, and we're in Ricky's master lab. Throwing the IQ in the box. It was a good sight for what it was, but Ricky's got me getting an upgrade. Making me all sorts of professional like him. Because he's got this Frankenstein of a bow in his, in his lab. And then you can, um, then you don't have to worry about Oh, that you went over, too far. Over going too far. You're like, oh, I right. can go back to 20. You so know you, what I'm saying? Oh, so this is always going to read what my bottom pin is at. That's, that's, what what should, that's what it should read. Right, right. So that way you don't screw yourself. Okay. You know? No, that makes more sense. Yeah, because I've never used any kind of sliding sight, so. Yeah, you'll like this. It's I, new, but I'm excited. You should be. We're going to shoot close first to see. We just got to get it centered. Okay, so we already did a little bit without showing you guys, but the game plan that Ricky uses, and it seems pretty darn smart, is you start a little bit farther up. We started up at 10 yards, ways up there. We moved our way back to 20 now, and uh, you might have heard of this before, but uh, Ricky says we're walk back tuning, so we're going each step, step by step, instead of just saying, oh, that's good enough or whatever. So we're getting the 20 dead on, and then uh, we need to do the 60. We're gonna go 20, 30, 40, 50, out to, 60. Out to 60. So we're gonna work our way from 20 out to 60 to uh, make sure that the 20 and the 60 are dead on. And then he's got a little uh, calibration thing that you get with dial sight. So then we're gonna do that and uh, should be ready to rock. I'm just excited to be able to go to stuff and like shoot farther and not be guessing. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be nice. And what's nice too is it's already it's already set, so that way more majority of the rail is up. Yeah, so I'm gonna so be able to get have much. more adjustment down. I was able to get out to 125 at that easy. Really? Mm -hmm. A little high. These pins. So we're down to our second. So if we want to go up a little bit, there's two screws here. Mm -hmm. So the top screw, you loosen it a little bit. And if you watch the pin, I don't know if you can I'm gonna put this in. The bottom one? Yep, I have it in the bottom one. If you watch that, and I tighten it, it goes up. Oh, and then it won't go past yeah, the point. It, the two screws push it in and out so if you push the top one in it's going to go down. If you push the bottom oh. one in it's going to go up. It's pretty nifty actually. Yeah, definitely. I got these things so that really stabilize so. Alright, we're doing good so far. We got it sighted in at 20 and 30. Ricky's making a move because the pin gap is pretty substantial right now for what's going to be the 40. And then uh, like I said, we're gonna have to do figure out all the way out to 60. Right now, we finally found some shade, so this will be a little bit more comfortable shooting. Cause it's finally a nice day in New York, and uh, we're just gonna keep on walking on back. About an inch high. You're shooting at the bottom dot. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I did. I just just felt like shooting at it. Yeah, just shot at it. Sometimes you get bored shooting the same dot. Jeez. Pumping them right in there. Those are in there, kid. So when we're tuning this, that gauge that you have, 
even though I, we have 20, 30, 40, it'll measure from wherever we stop this for 60 to the 20. So it'll measure from, so we already have a 20 mark. So we're gonna leave it at that 40 because we have 20, 30, 40. Mm -hmm. So that essentially will be your 20 mark. And then you'll measure out to where 60 is. Who knows, this sight tape could actually be right on. But oh. it'll just measure the distance from this 20 to the 60. Once you get this dialed down to 60. Correct. That mark to 60. Correct. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna talk about this real quick. Ricky's went to go get his spotting scope. So this is the Spot Hog Fast Eddy that I picked. Well, like I said, I was looking at it, but Ricky actually had one and he was looking to sell it, so it worked out perfect. I, I wanted a dial that had three pins. As you can see, that's what I got right here. I think three pins is a lot better for someone like myself, maybe not everybody, but as a bow hunter and a tree stand hunter, you never know what the situation is gonna develop into. So if a deer comes into 20 and then they hear you draw or something happens and they bound out to 30, I don't wanna have to let down to redial back out to 30. So now I have my 20, 30, 40 pins. I can cover anything that's gonna be out of a tree stand. Cause I, I can't remember the last time I hunted on the edge of a field anyway. And if it was in that situation, the deer's probably gonna be a lot more calm in a field where if I have to dial out, I can. But I'm never actually gonna go past 40 in the woods. I've never, the farthest I've ever had in the woods was the nine pointer that you guys can watch the video on here. And that was uh, at 32 yards. So I'm never gonna need anything more than this until I go out west or uh, we have some fun 3D shoots. So that's why I wanted to get a three pin dial. And if you're a whitetail hunter, I think that would be something for you to look into as well. This is when it starts getting fun. Take your time if you don't if you don't feel comfortable let down. Left and right's perfect. Yeah, Just a little, a little bit low. A little low. Yeah, you better get used to being under that glass. I'm hey, I'm alright with that. We got at least hopefully not five days, but I'll take five days of this. I mean well no, I mean we're out west. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hopefully it doesn't take it, but But like I said, I'll take you know, I'll do this all day long. Yeah, I'd rather have five days of that than five days of work. Perfect shot. You're right. Well, it's the same exact spots. Right on the same one. Yep, right on the same one. I'll tell you what. Sometimes I feel like I shoot better at a distance. I don't. I think it's because I, you don't start telling yourself like, oh, that's easy. You'll make it. Like you actually go through your steps a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't want to be that idiot that like launches it five feet over or under right. at that distance. Same height, just just a tad a little left. Bit left of it. Yep, but that's that's not a bad group at all. Fifty yards. I mean, you're only. Is it a little bit low though? Yeah, just a little bit low. We're gonna adjust that, so right just in front of me. That's 60? Yep. We're gonna go to Australia, yep. is all I'm saying. I don't know how much it would cost. My buddy that went there, everything's cheaper there. Oh, is it? Oh yeah, he said everything is dirt cheap there. He goes, the American dollar goes a long freaking ways there. Oh, well, that's good. Full send. Yep. Are you shooting the top dot or middle? No, I'm shooting the middle one. Oh, let's, let's double check though. Okay. That's, That's enough that I shouldn't go over. I'm gonna shoot the same spot just in case I was rising with it. Okay. I don't think I was, but. Yeah, you're right under that top dot. So you might oh. need to do 60. I'm oh, grabbing it. Like I said, you're shooting the last one at 60. Oh, okay. 69.9. I like how smooth this is too. Oh yeah. The Fast Eddies are nice because I'm getting the Fast Eddie XL. All the only difference is the dovetail. Because okay. then I could just take off my hogget and put that on. I could slide, because it's in a dovetail, just slide the hogget off. Oh, can the, the hogget have a dog, dovetail? It has it. Oh, it does have it already. Yep. So I just throw that right in there. Is that, does that stick out farther? Forward? The XL? Yeah. It actually, I can make it stick out the same, same distance. Cause what is the, like, what, why do people prefer a dovetail? Ease of taking it off, put it on so that way you can like, store it a little bit easier. I was gonna say, cause like, um, but this I don't have to take off. No. And if it's only that same distance, why would you want to take it off? Right. I guess is what I'm saying. Well, I could go out a little bit further. If right. I, was, I could probably stick it out about there. But there's no point in going out that far. Yeah, it Le seems it, like it. Levi Morgan does a good bit on why he doesn't shoot a site that's that much further out because your movements are magnified the further out it gets. Sure. Yeah, it makes your pin look smaller to aim more precisely, but now you're magnified. That's why I shoot just over halfway in my bar on my target oh, okay. scope. Gotcha. Yeah, enough that you're 
you're trying to optimize everything. Right. You know, no overkill on anything. Ooh, yeah. Just a touch high. A touch high. I would, I would be very satisfied with that, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. If it was me, I would be very, very satisfied. Let's put it this way, Ricky. If I have a... If I could make that shot when we're moving. If you have honey. a mule deer or an antelope at that distance, if there's not a chance that thing's gonna live. Well, maybe an antelope. They move pretty fast. Yeah, but they're kind of. They're kind of they, dumb. They're getting, well, they're curious. Oh. I had one come walk just about right up to me. Really? Yeah. But then as soon as they spook, they'll just keep running. They don't stop. Right. They just go. You're gonna find them in the next count. And there'll be more there too. There's usually a bunch of small herds. Just a touch of them. You're right in there. Full send. My best shot I've ever made is 78 yards. 78? Well, a 12 at 78 yards. Yeah, we're good. But I, I wasn't necessarily aiming at the 12. You were just aiming for the center. I was, yeah, I was, it was on a mountain goat target and I hit. But it's nice, you beat up yours so much that I could try to shoot that black dot. Absolutely. I have something to aim for. Absolutely. Shoot a couple at the bag and then shoot one at the deer. Money. All right, we're about to break my uh, PB of 78 yards by shooting at 80. 80 yards. Well, that's 80, but you can't see it, so we're gonna pan back this way. Going for the official PB. I see my dog. 80 yards on the deer. Back. Hi. This one's it. Yep. That's a money shot. Dead center of the center of the string. That one felt good. I'm trying. All right, three shots, and we finally brought her right in. So we got shot number one at 80, shot number two at 80, and there's shot number three right in that kill zone. Take that all day. Okay, it's hard to see, but the target is right there. That little green dot that we're shooting at. 90 yards. Hopefully the camera doesn't die. But we're going full scent. Well, I'm going to aim right. Pretty much what I'll be aiming at is the top circle's got the black ring around it. Mm -hmm. The bottom edge of the black ring. Sounds good. Because that's all I got. Or else I'm going to be aiming at the top one and I might shoot over. Well, Which I don't care. That's but. a good spot. Aim right there. Look at my sight right now. Not shooting with that in there. Here we go. Oh, yeah, the right on the money. Really? Right where you were aiming. <laughs> Like you couldn't be any more dead center and right on the black line. Call it a hit. Anything that I do that like the thing at the home and I get all excited about, you laugh at. Yeah, well, it happens. All right, there you have it, guys. We were going to shoot to 100, but uh, the crest of the hill, we can't really uh, shoot that far. But thank you, Ricky. Because of him, I, uh, I broke my PB, shot 90 yards. Now it's just time to prep. Me and he's gonna be in a couple more videos because he is going to be in South Dakota with me and uh, we're gonna get ourselves some mule deer. So a lot of summer prep coming into it, some 3D shoots, the Reinhardt 100, it's a bunch of other fun stuff. So if you like this video, please go subscribe or like it and uh, leave a comment if you want some ideas for content for me that I can try to put together so you guys enjoy more of my content. As I always say, wait, time out. 
If you guys haven't been on Instagram in a while, my account got hacked. So go over to hitting the at hitting the dream on Instagram and give me a follow again because I lost all 15,000 of you. Now we're trying to get back to where we were. So now that I've said that, as always, for me and Ricky, can't wait to see you. Hit your mark.